My name is Andrea Watkins and I am the program supervisor for the Women's Fund. Again, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. Um, hopefully you can add a little tool in your resource box uh, with these work-life balance tips today. So before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the Women's Fund really quickly. So what we do is we're a nonprofit in the Houston area that serves women and girls and empowers them to be advocates for their health. So we do that by hosting focused seminars, by doing curriculum-based classes like we're doing today, and then we also give out free publications. Um, our publications are free of charge, uh, so if you want to look at any of them, you can go on our website. You can actually uh, just download it to, to your computer and it's on there. It's great stuff. We are currently working on getting some of them translated to Spanish. So that is always good. They're great tools. We use them all the time. It's actually where a lot of our presentations come from. And then you can also follow us on our social media platforms. We have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and as of today, we also have TikTok. So stay tuned. All right, so um, before I get started on today's agenda, I'm gonna go ahead and take my video off so that the internet just links to my voice. And I believe everyone's muted. If you have any questions at any time, or if I ask you a question, this little chat icon's gonna pop up. Whenever you see that, just go ahead and put your answer into the chat and then we can all just see what we're sharing. Of course, you don't have to share if you don't want to, but that's what makes this more interactive. So today's agenda, what we're going to discuss is the phrase work-life balance. And hopefully by the end of today, you'll see how I'm not really a fan of that phrase. We're going to learn new ways to phrase work-life balance, even though that's what most of us hear. We're going to learn strategies for balance. We're going to learn um, less stress in the workplace, and then we're going to review and close. So again, thank you for tuning in today. Okay, so what my goals for this presentation, when you guys are done watching and done listening, is for you to discuss different definitions to the phrase work-life balance. Again, if you go on a Google search and you put work-life balance, a bunch of stuff is going to pop up. But I'm actually going to teach you new phrases that maybe there might not be a lot of resources on. But we're going to see what it's like to kind of shift our thinking with this word balance. We're also going to identify three strategies to use to cope with the challenge of balancing work and home. And then we're going to state two techniques to use for stress reduction. Again, if you have any questions at any point in time, please put it in the chat. We can have a discussion after. Please pardon me if my dog barks or if any strange noise is coming from my end, just let me know and I'll go ahead and fix it. All right, so this is my first question. I want to ask you guys, what would you say are the top three most important aspects of your life? If you were to look at your life as a whole, what are your top three priorities? What's most important to you at this time? Now go ahead and I'll open my chat. So again, we're asking, what would you say are the top three most important aspects of your life? What, at this moment in time, are your biggest priorities? All right, so someone says relationships and health. Then we've got growth. That's a good one. We have happiness, health, education, health, family, financial planning. Okay, these are all really good. And I definitely see health on everyone's might be the, the time that we're in. But good. Yeah, these are all great. These are your priorities at this time. Um, the crazy thing about life is sometimes they shift. 
you know, your top three might always remain your top three, but they kind of take different turns on maybe what's number one. So thank you. All right. So a lot of the research that I've done for this presentation actually comes from Forbes, the business insider on how they look into uh, organizations and workplaces to see how it is that employees are actually trying to balance everything. So now that we are in this tech world, I mean, the Women's Fund is making a shift right now. We're teaching a class online. So technology is always accessible around the clock. We probably have our emails linked to our phone. We have all of our coworkers' phone numbers. Um, so we're probably getting a lot of technology just blasted in our face right now, you know, whether it be you have to answer your boss or you have to answer the email. So 94% of professionals reported that they actually work more than 50 hours per week. And then nearly half of those said that they work 65 hours per week. And one thing across the board is that professionals and everyone that studies this agrees that a never ending workday is damaging. Some of us feel that, oh, I didn't, you know, do that report as good as I should have, or, oh, I didn't do that presentation the way that, you know, would appeal to my boss, so let me go in and change it. So we're constantly finding excuses of why our workday never ends. So another question I have for you, this phrase work-life balance. You know, maybe this is the first time you're hearing it, but what does it mean to you? Or what, when you've heard it before, like what context do you use it in? Or what does it personally mean to you? I mean, it does kind of seem obvious that it would be balancing your work and life, but is there anything else that anyone has? Finding a way to fit in both work and personal life. Yes. That is a great way of doing it. And actually fit is one of the words that we're gonna use later on. Yes, yeah, someone said yes. Being able to live life without work consuming my free time. Yes, that is a good definition. Prioritizing, yes, that is a really good one word definition of work-life balance is just prioritizing. All right, so thank you for your responses. So we're gonna kind of shift our thinking from work-life balance and let's call it work-life fit because I, I saw that Kayla said, trying to fit both your work and your personal life together. So when you say work like fit, it helps you see the possibilities instead of focusing on what they can't have. So this might be per, like just me, but when I'm sitting at work, I'm thinking about all the things I have to do once I get home. Once I get home, I'm thinking about all the reports and things that are due at work tomorrow. So your mind is constantly thinking of the thing that it's not on. So without that, you rob yourself of time right? You're constantly worrying about what's next. So even a small change of just telling yourself, no, I will not think about what's for dinner or anything until maybe my commute home or maybe making sure that maybe during your lunch break is when you can talk to your partner or your children about what the plans are for that night. Just making sure that you use your time effectively at work and only do work stuff. And I only say that because if you don't do work stuff at work, you're going to take it home and then worry about it then. So try to make sure that you get all your priorities written down on a list of things that you have to do. So um, even the smallest change, you know, maybe uh, you just have one day where you work remotely, obviously not right now, but whenever you, have, you go to the office every day and maybe you tell your boss, look, can I just have one day of working remotely? That can make the biggest difference. So trying to see what it is that can help you achieve your goals and prioritize the things that need to be prioritized. So again, work-life fit. What fits better 
for me. Because when you think of balance, it's like a teeter-totter. You're like, okay, all my attention's on work, and now I'm going to have to balance it with life. So fit is a better way of saying it. A better term is work-life integration. So sometimes she has to fit her work-life into her personal life. You know, sometimes after work, your coworkers ask you to go um, grab a bite to eat, or sometimes, um, you know, your boss wants to take you out for dinner. So sometimes it's inevitable that your work is going to be with your personal life. And it's, that's okay. Um, but then on the other times, you're trying to find personal ways that, or you're trying to find ways that your personal life fits into your work life. So let's say that your child has a play at 3 p.m. and you know that's during work hours, but you're still trying to fit that in there. You can come up with a strategy integrate that time into your workplace. Make sure that before you leave for that three o'clock recital or play, that you finish everything that, have, that you have to do so you're not worrying about it after the play. So people are going to be putting so much time into their company, so it's okay that they integrate some life into their work day, right? So your boss and your organization, they know you're gonna show up. They know you're gonna put in the work. And then when you get home, your partner and your family and your kids they expect for you to put in the work too. So it is a lot to do, and it's okay if sometimes little bits of pieces do go into both of them, but you have to make sure that you shut it off and it doesn't affect um, the opposite. So then work-life interface. This is described as how the various demands in your life touch up against each other. So we all have felt that pressure before where it's the end of the month and you have all these reports due or you have you know this meeting where you're presenting something and then at home the night before you didn't get enough sleep because your dog was barking all night or your kids were sick or you know you all have we have those times in our life where they just rub up against each other and you're just like this is not what I need right now What's the most important thing is that you have to feel that you have control over managing your time and your energy. So what that means is, yes, your child being sick at night, that is going to take up your time and your energy. So yes, you won't be as perky and as ready to go tomorrow, but as long as you can tell yourself, you know what, I'm going to do it and give it the best that I can and manage your time wisely preparing for it, then that's that's what's going to happen. You know, like you can't sit there and say, oh, have these high expectations that you're just going to do amazing. And then you bomb it because you had those high expectations. So it's important to feel or to remember that you have control over your time. You have time or you have control over your energy as well. If you're putting in all your energy at work. Of course, there's going to be some depletion on the life and on your family end. Another word is work-life sway. So when you think of sway, you're just kind of going where the wind takes you. Um, so you've got this natural balance between the ebb and flow of life, right? Most of the time, this is how we move. This is how we do things. We kind of just take it and run with it. You know, things are gonna pop up in your work day. Things are gonna pop up when you get home. So we kind of just start swaying back and forth. Some days you will have to be more present at work because maybe you did put off that deadline because you had to go home early due to something. And that is okay. I'm not telling you to be in like this rigid form of only work and only life, nothing in between. You have to see what works best for you. Um, other days you need to go to your children's school and volunteer. Sometimes that is the priority. Right? I know sometimes as women, we feel like, oh, we have to be there all the time for everyone. We cannot say no. And that's not true. Sometimes you do have to say, I have corporate coming in tomorrow, so maybe the day before is not a good day to bake cookies for the kid, for their school. You've got it, you're the boss of your time, you're the boss of your schedule. So you have to make sure that you're focusing in on that energy and sticking up for what it is that you need to do first. So how do you be present at the times when it matters the most? You're probably asking. 
So what all of these phrases emphasize is that there's no right way to mix the different realms of your life. So if you think about it, when you think of your life as a whole, if you were to take away work, would that affect your life? Or if you look at your life again as a whole, and then you're having problems with your marriage or your relationship, and you take that away, now you only have work, is that gonna affect your life? So you have to think of it as you have this ball and that ball is your life. And if you take away things from it, the ball just won't roll because it's not a perfect ball. You have to make sure that it's mixed and integrated and fit in there properly. So with the balance, I know that the key to life is balance, but when it comes to work and life, sometimes you have to make sure that you're putting yourself first because if not, both of those will fail. Again, just to really emphasize that I had to underline it. All right, so you're probably asking yourself, all right, is there something that I can learn? What can I do to help me navigate the responsibilities of just being an adult? So number one, which is very hard for some of us, I'm, I'm being one of them, is to let go of perfectionism. The key to avoid burning out is to let go, or to, yeah, let go, strive for excellence. So what this means is that at some point, you're gonna have to put it down. Sure, your coworker might do everything early and might do everything exceptional. You don't know what's going on in your coworker's life. Maybe they're not juggling as much as you are. So you have to let go of everything being absolutely perfect. It's okay to make mistakes. The second one is to unplug. So turn off your phone when the workday ends. Some of us might have notifications on our phone when we get an email and it pops up and now your attention is back on work. That is something that I know is hard to do, but sometimes you have to set a timer or set something in your settings that after five o'clock or when your workday ends, that you don't get notifications that someone emailed you. Make quality time true quality time. So if you're hanging out with your family and y'all just ate dinner and you're watching movies, actually watch the movie. Don't just all four of you or five of you be on your phone. Actually make time to watch that movie with your family. And then resilient people feel more control over their lives. So when something knocks us down and the faster we get up, you have more control of it. Not only you're controlling your energy and your emotions, but you're controlling how fast you can get over the thing that just happened. Now, again, things are gonna happen left and right, but the faster you can arise from it, the better. All right, so some more tips are exercise and mediate or meditate that's probably what it meant to say but exercise is something that we say on all of our presentations exercise and eating right i feel is something that is probably touched on um, in every thing that we say but even when you are busy crucial needs have to be met right so yes you might have a workload that day and so many things to do at home but what about your health Everyone put health as your top priorities. Are you actually taking time to take care of your health? Because exercise is a big component of that health. One of the most crucial needs is to set aside time when we become busy. I know that it's super hard to carve an hour, let alone 30 minutes out of your day, right? But this is what's needed. If you really prioritize your health, exercise, is crucial. And we also had another presentation uh, on self-care and how important it is. Now, self-care is very unique to everybody. Self-care could just be you laying in bed with some music on. Self-care is whatever you do to unwind and let go of all the responsibilities, even if it is just for 10 minutes. You have to make sure you put yourself first because if you don't put yourself first, work and family will not be there. 
And then number four is limit time wasting activities. You know what those are. You know that candy crush, that Facebook scrolling, that Instagram feed. Hopefully you haven't gone to the TikTok, but that will just take four hours of your day. I don't do it, just saying. Um, set boundaries and devote quality time. Setting boundaries and saying, look, I want to spend time with you and spending time with you is you watching this TV show with me, not you being on your phone. So you have to make sure that you set boundaries with your partners and your family, and most importantly, your boss. Because your boss, as much as we want to please them, they will continue to call you after hours and send you emails on your days off, on the weekends. You have to make sure you set those boundaries. All right, and I believe these are our last two tips. So change the structure of your life. What changes could make your life easier? Think about it right now. Maybe more time, you know, maybe if we had more energy, uh, maybe if, you know, we had an option, or not an option, but had the control of what's going on in our current climate right now. There's a lot of changes that could make our life easier, of course, maybe more money. So think about those and then delegate. So let's say that one of yours is time. If you had more time, your life would be easier. So I challenge you to delegate things to do now and give others a chance to grow and help. So for instance, there's not enough time when you get home to cook dinner, let the dog out, help the kids with homework, you know, do the chores, blah, blah, blah. That's a lot of stuff to do. So if you delegate and you give your partner or you give a child, you tell them, hey, I really just need you to help me dry these dishes or hey, I really just need you to help me walk the dog really quickly. Start telling people things to do. As women, we feel like, oh no, don't worry, I got it. I can do it all. And a lot of times men are like, what? Or wait, what do you want me to do? They want you to hold their hands and do it. But it's okay for you to let them do it. You probably tell yourself, oh, if I do it, it'll just get done faster or it'll get done better. That's not true. Just let other people help you. Help is okay. And then start small, build from there. Starting small is a great way for you to start making big changes, right? So maybe you cannot carve out an hour out of your day. All right, let's do 20 minutes, just 20 minutes. Maybe before you go to bed or maybe right after you wake up where you just meditate by yourself or you just go for a walk by yourself. All right, 20 minutes is too much, I get it. Then 10, and then start building from there. The smallest changes that you can make right now will have a big impact later on, especially if you stick with them and give yourself the time and discipline to do it. All right, so all this is said and done. It's easy, right? All this stuff can be done, just this lecture, whatever, you could have done it by yourself, but now let's talk about what the elephant in the room. All these tips were great, all this work-life fit integration, but most of us are working from home and we've had this unexpected shift with COVID. So our work-life fit or work-life integration is all over the place. There is no separation because they're both combined into one. So while you're sitting here doing this presentation or while you're sitting there sending emails, your child is also telling you that they want a grilled cheese for lunch. So it's very hard for it to have a gray area, or it is a gray area because it's not very black and white anymore. So these are five tips that I have heard um, from another Forbes article uh, about how to embrace this, this new normal that we have. So the thing that obviously is much more implied now is that we're always on, right? Just because we're not seeing our coworkers or our bosses face to face, you feel compelled to always be by your phone to make sure that you're answering their phone calls and their texts, right? But for the first part, you have to 
honor yourself. So it's important to understand why work-life fit or work-life integration, whichever new term that you liked, benefits you and the organization you work for. So according to one survey, more than half of workers lose sleep because of workplace stress and a quarter of workers say it impacts their work quality. So right now our anxiety is probably super high, right? And we're like, wow, I used to sleep like a baby. Now I can't because there's 48 things running through my mind. Yeah, that's what happens whenever things shift. So you have to remember to honor yourself first. You have to make sure that once your workday is over, it's over and you spend quality time with your family and you have to have that communication with your family saying, look, while I'm at work, I really need to focus on this. Unless it's a super emergency, please go to um, your other sibling or you know your mom or dad. The one that I really liked, the second one, is let airplane mode be your friend. Um, some of us probably haven't turned off our phone in a very, very long time. It's okay to turn off your phone. There is that feature. But a, maybe a friendlier feature is to just put airplane mode on, right? So sure, you're, if you get a text message from your coworker, you don't answer right away. It's okay, right? Because everyone thinks that now that we're at home, we need to be easy to locate immediately. But that's not true. You know, maybe we are busy doing something else, like working on a presentation or a report that's due. So you have to make sure that you can turn off your phone and say, you know what, when I get to it, I'll get to it. It doesn't have to be right away. You don't have to really stress yourself out to answer everything at all times. The other one is to delegate workflow for off hours. So there's no way around it. No matter what is happening at work, life is happening at the same time, especially around us. So, you know, your family members might get sick. You might get news that someone has gotten COVID um, or a child needs to be taken care of right immediately. Um, so all of this happens while you're at work. And so we need to make sure that our communication is to point with both your team and your family, right? Let's say you do get that text um, that someone has gotten COVID and you really need to attend to that. Tell your boss, tell your coworkers like, hey, I just need one hour, two hours to figure this out. I'll be right back, right? So you have to make sure that it, you delegate your workflow correctly and communicate with everyone. Four, again, Exercise, it's so important. You have to mind your physical health. Exercise is proven time and time again over all sorts of um, studies that it'll help eliminate some of those stresses going on. It'll help you sleep better. It'll help you just feel more energized. It'll help you accomplish more things, even though your exercising is adding another thing to your list. I know that doesn't make sense, but you have so many things to do and then adding exercise to it just seems like the world would end. But if you actually prioritize that exercise, then it'll help you to do everything else. And then number five, be sustainable beyond the crisis. So what does that even mean? So with unemployment, actually unemployment rates have been soaring. So this is something else that has been scaring us. Um, employees must approach this work-life caution or fit with caution. You need to ensure that work remains your priority and that your schedule does not compromise your job security, right? If you're going to tell your boss that that report will be done by three o'clock, make sure that you do everything you can because you would do that if you were in the office. But if something happens, like a child being sick, again, you have to make sure you're communicating properly. Even the smallest things, you know, you're not in a office environment for everyone to know what you're doing. So you have to make sure that you're communicating with everybody. All right, so I believe, let me see if I can find. I'm gonna try to share this video.
Okay. Everyone hear it? Before I go on. Yes, perfect. All right. Let's start by going back, say, five centuries. What do you think work life and home life consisted of then? Before industrialization, our ancestors woke up at the crack of dawn and went into their farms where they took care of their domestic animals and plants. In the evening, they would head back to their houses to have dinner and to relax and recuperate their physical strength for the day. In their world, the things that were defined as work were clear and were done for a period right from dawn to when the chicken went to roost. These included activities that brought food to the table, like tilling, collecting eggs, milking the cows, and making scarecrows to keep away the birds. Others were meant to make the home comfortable, like fixing a leaking roof, splitting firewood for colder nights, and doing laundry so that beds would have warm bedding. Home life, on the other hand, would include the period that didn't have work. So when families assembled in the evenings, the parents would tell their children stories, and this way, teach them and pass down knowledge. Saturday men's clubs and family church on Sunday can also be classified as home life, as they provide nourishment for the soul rather than for the body. Granted, life may not have sounded as idealistic as we put it, but the idea is to show that at the time, there was a clear distinctive time for work and time not meant for work. In the 21st century, the distinction is not so clear. The internet has bridged billions of people together and has us connected 24 hours a day, and taking work home is the norm. A global survey done by The Way Ahead in the gas and oil industry showed that 55% of workers in the industry took their work home and 38% felt guilty when they did not carry something from the office. At the same time, Next Evolution Performance found, from their coaching experience, that employees in the workplace are 60% as productive as they could be. Essentially, what's happening is that we go to work and constantly check and reply to our emails, do some of the work we're supposed to do, check our social media, and then, with our minds still on work, go home. When you get home, you spare some time before or after dinner to get working on the work you didn't do. As you're hitting the send button on the report you were working on, your email pings. Your proactive supervisor has already assigned you work for tomorrow all the way to Monday. It seems like a lot of work, you think. You shut off your computer, your head fills with mental images of all the reports you'll have to send and the meetings you'll have to attend. With this stream of thoughts, you go to sleep. In the morning, you're back to work. And just as you take work home in the evening, you do the same during the weekend, as your supervisor knows you're only an email away. For example, last Saturday, as you were enjoying beer, barbecue, and a football game with your friends, your boss called. Check your email, he said. There was an emergency, a mistake in some work you did, and he needed it corrected immediately. Just like that, you were back to work. This is why the conversation on work-life balance is important. It might seem normal, but it's not healthy that you're at work all the time. Some of the effects of a bad work-life balance include fatigue and constant exhaustion, increased expectations on the part of the employer, which is why your supervisor can call you on a weekend, increased stress, and a reduction in time spent with family and friends. So how do you balance out your work and home life in a way that's healthy, but still ensures that you keep your job? Begin by finding out how much time you spend in either of these lives. Start a diary, and during a normal week, log in the amount of time you spend doing productive work at the office. Make sure to account for time you waste being distracted, how long your chores take, and the amount of time you spend unplugged. Looking at the diary, what seems problematic to you? Can you see that you spend too much time at work? How much of that time is spent productively? Or maybe your problem is more about the fact that the time you're supposed to be winding down is spent thinking about work. Either way, you need to diagnose the specific problem that's in the balance of your work and personal lives. So, what would an ideal work-life balance look like for you? How much time do you need to spend at work to ensure that all your duties are met? What would winding down look like for you? You can go as far as drawing a pie chart that shows the percentage of time spent doing all your important activities. In fact, you can go as far as getting a key for the pie chart, one that explains what you're allowed to do when working and when playing. Pin this on your desk at work and your fridge at home. Then, work on achieving this balance slowly and steadily. One of the main reasons 92% of Americans do not stick to their New Year's resolutions is because they try to chew too much too fast. For you to get the work-life balance you want to achieve, you may have to stand up to a supervisor and insist that they do not call you with work during the weekend. However, if your weekends are spent correcting mistakes in your week's work, you and your supervisor may brush shoulders. So what do you start by doing? Before clocking out on Friday, you could peruse your work to correct any mistakes that may have been present. 
Then, if she does call you to give you more work, you can very creatively say no. And maybe if your work has no mistakes, she won't call you. It's also important to completely unplug when you're away from work. Turn off your computer and don't look at your work email. Better yet, spend this time checking out what's going on with your friends on social media or spend time doing something with your kids. You may be important at your workplace, but not so much that the company would fall down if you had a no phone, no email, no any kind of worker calls date night with your partner. Your concentration chips a little every time you look at something new, and working when you should not be could mean that you're constantly stressed. Self-care is another way to improve your work-life balance by increasing the quality of your off time. Exercise makes you feel good, and this is because as you pump your muscles, feel-good endorphins are released into your bloodstream. Meditating and doing yoga exercises, on the other hand, also help to reduce stress, as they demand that you don't get intertwined into your mind's thoughts, that you observe what you're thinking. What would make you feel good? Going to the salon? Going for a budgeted and planned for shopping spree? Running the track? Lifting some weights? Or maybe stretching it out? Ladies, go to the salon once every two Saturdays and get your nails and your hair done and see what that does for your productivity during the work week. Observe how you feel as well. Are you feeling well rested? Finally, to achieve a good work-life balance, you need to limit your interactions with people or activities that waste your time. The study previously mentioned stated that at work, employees are 60% as productive as they should be. Where is the inefficiency? Observe yourself at work. How much time do you spend on your social media and responding to emails? How much time aimlessly chatting? During your playtime, who do you interact with that affects your relaxation? Why do you interact with them? Could you interact a little less with these persons? If someone or some activities are not doing you any good in either your work or your home life, cut them off. We hope that you can see the importance of balancing your work and your personal lives. It has both an effect on how well you perform at work and the quality of your playtime. The old adage, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy stands true. But carrying work to play could also make you a dull and stressed person. Thank you for watching us today, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, so that was just a cute little recap of everything that we talked about because I know that you don't want to hear my voice straight for 50 minutes. So in closing, some of the things that I picked up from the presentation for you to remember is though life is a balance and again balance is okay and if you continue to use the term work-life balance it's okay I'm not going to be mad at you but balance is more of a challenge when you use it in that context, but you have to find what fits best. That's a better thing to tell yourself, what fits best for me today? So you need to also find your priorities. And again, they are not the same as your colleagues or your friends. That perfectionism, that comparing yourself is not gonna help you at all. You also can identify resources to achieve your goals and use them. Right, so something that I've personally used recently is on my phone, I will go in and I will add a time limit to my social media consumption. So I put it in an hour and then after an hour, it shuts me out of all my social media and I cannot be scrolling mindlessly for four hours because that was my biggest thing is I was just constantly on social media. And so I was like, you know what? An hour will get me exactly what I need. It'll give me my updates and it's worked wonders for me. So maybe something small like that would help you. And then again, don't let this COVID-19 crisis define you. Let it shape you. Let it help you achieve your goals. Don't let it not help you. All right. So before I go on to the evaluation page, I wanted again to talk about our platforms, even though I just said get off of social media. But if you want any help um, or if you need any more tips or if you need any more guidance, you can always follow us on our social media and we will give you updates on what we're working on next. Some, something I'm really looking forward to is our nutrition shopping on a budget presentation next week and then also self-empowerment. All the things that we do are to help you create a better work-life flow and fit for you. So listening to these presentations and maybe making some notes of things to try will always help you. Maybe not always help you, but they'll try to steer you in the right direction. Now, if you have any personal questions, uh, you can always email us at Health Educator at the Women's Fund. Uh, I'm also going to be on 
for chat if anyone has any further questions about this presentation. And then also, if you don't mind doing the survey really quickly for us, we are actually doing a raffle. This is the second, um, second presentation that we're doing that if you do the survey, it'll put you into this raffle that'll help, that will, you'll win a $25 gift card to, I don't know, probably somewhere good. But I have included the QR code if you just wanna take a picture of that code and then it'll take you straight to the survey. Just fill it out, it takes about two minutes. It'll help us get more feedback on how to make these presentations better. And who knows, you might win. So let me go ahead and start my video. Does anyone have any further questions? Let me see, can you- Hi, I have in? a question, sorry to interrupt. Um, no, it's okay, go for it. <laughs> I'm unable to um, click on the link for the um, survey monkey. Could you um, copy that link into the chat box? Absolutely, let me do that right now. No. You know, I thought about it while I was making this presentation. I was like, they can't click this. <laughs> Does anyone else have any other questions? Let's see. 